Okay, welcome back to our lesson on Unit Micro. What we're going to be looking at uh, right now is a small squad of stalkers, five stalkers to be exact, versus six roaches. And what we're going to do is just have them both attack move at each other, which means I'm not going to be messing with either side. They're just going to be fighting each other, and the AI is going to be dictating uh, which targets that each of these people are going to be picking out. And they're just going to fight until one team's dead. So we'll go ahead and just fight them and see what happens. So they're both going to come in. They're usually going to shoot at the closest target and try to kill those first. Um, what we're expecting to happen here is we're expecting these roaches to just beat the crap out of these stalkers. Um, number one, because they're outnumbered, and number two, because roaches are a very good unit against stalkers. Um, but it, it depends. It's very conditional. Uh, we're going to see these stalkers uh, lose 2-0 to zero to these roaches, and we're going to retire this roach because he is hurt, so goodbye. You're going to die for the sake of your team. And uh, we're going to set up another test here. So we're going to go ahead and select uh, these and get a few more roaches. One, two. And we're going to put out the same number of stalkers. One, two, three, four, five. But this time I'm going to show you guys what the benefit is of engagement angles. Uh, I'm going to show you how engaging favorably, at, at least in terms of positioning, is going to really help you out. Now let's assume that these roaches are just standing around for whatever reason. Um, maybe they were fighting something, and, but the point is that they're going to be lining up like this. If I run straight into it, look, all six roaches are going to be attacking me. What I want to do is I want to segment that army as much as I can. So I'm going to attack from up here and make it so that only a couple roaches fight me at a time. We're going to see what happens. So the first, our baseline test is 2-0 to zero in favor of the roaches. Now we're going to see, uh-oh, look at this. It's 5 versus uh, 3 roaches. So guess who's going to win that? Uh, these roaches are just going to be standing around, not participating participating in the battle. Even though you did start out with six, just because I engaged from an angle in which it didn't alert the whole army, or in which, let's say there's a situation where this back half of the army can't fire, I'm left with only one lost stalker versus all of your roaches being dead, leaving big stains here on the floor and just making a mess. We're going to retire this stalker. We're going to have the two retirees fight each other because they're both hurt. We always want to start with fresh units when we're doing these examples. So you can see that uh, unit engagement positioning is very important. You don't want to engage at a bad angle. Uh, this stalker is going to lose. Whack, you're dead. You do not want to... Uh, six stalkers, my fault. You do not want to just run right into the teeth of an army. You want to engage them at favorable angles, like from the side, uh, so you're only attacking a small part of their army at a time. Let me get six more roaches up on the field, and we'll show another element of unit micro. Uh, what we're going to show this time is uh, we're going to show pulling hurt units back when they need to be pulled back. That is, when they are low on health, but still keeping them included in the fight. Um, the reason this is going to be beneficial is because you won't lose a unit, but you'll still get the damage out of them that you wanted to. Now let's say we, we got a crappy engagement angle right here. I'm going to spread out these stalkers just a little bit so they don't clump up. Um, let's say we got a, a crappy engagement angle and I just ran right in here and engaged all of them for some reason. I only have five stalkers and you have six. That You saw before that uh, we lost that. 2-0. to zero. Now if I pull back the hurt units, you're going to see what kind of benefits this is going to have. All five stalkers are up there, and what we're going to do here is he's hurt, so I'm going to move him back. Uh, this guy's hurt now, so I'm going to move him back. I'm going to keep him attacking. I'm going to move him back, keep him attacking. This guy's getting hurt again, so I'm going to move him back. This guy's getting hurt, so I'm going to move him back. Uh, you can see that now the tides have definitely turned. I do not want to lose any units if I can help it. But look at that. I now have three stalkers and they have zero roaches. So just moving my hurt units to the back, but pressing T as soon as they get back there and clicking on the map allows them to get back in the fight and keep fighting even though they're hurt. So you guys are retired. Get down here and fight that roach and defend your honor. You're in the game. You're coming off the bench. Good job. So you can see that pulling units back is a lot better than just walking them in there and letting them die. This Roach loses. He is a dead retiree now. So we're going to replenish these armies again, and we're going to show you uh, an element of battle that is known as focus firing. Uh, focus firing is going to be basically putting all of your uh, eggs into one basket, having all of your units attack only one of their units, so that you're eliminating units on the field as fast as possible. 
So we're going to basically engage in the same way so that I both armies are firing at, at full volume. We but instead we're going to have the Stalkers firing at one roach at a time, trying to whittle down their numbers as fast as possible and see what the outcome is. So here we go. So you can see here, I set up that shift queue again, and I'm not going to micro these units back because I don't really uh, have that part as part of the example. But I'm going to be engaging one roach at a time with all my stalkers. You can see them, they got a little bit confused here in that command, but they are whittling down these roaches a lot faster than if they were each shooting at different targets. So we're going to see these uh, stalkers come out again 2-0 to zero, only because I focused down roaches rather than just letting them walk in there and fire at whatever. So with a combination of focusing down and a combination of uh, pulling hurt units back, you're going to get a lot better results than if you just walked in there and fought. Now the next thing we're going to take a look at is uh, we're going to take a look at a different unit composition versus a different unit composition. This is going to be five stalkers and one immortal versus the red players five zealots don't have a rally on that apparently and one immortal so uh, on paper you would say well stalkers are more expensive than zealots they should be better right well no not necessarily you need to know your matchups and focus down your targets based upon their correct matchups now if you take a look at these units damage the uh, Stalkers and the Immortal both get, both get damage versus armored, and you can see, especially on the Immortal, it's a huge difference. If he's shooting a non-armored target, he's going to only put out 20 damage, whereas if he, puts a, if he shoots an armored target, he's going to put out 50 damage. So uh, you can see that you definitely want this Immortal shooting at armored targets. If you take a look at the properties on these units, there's no armored here whereas there is armored here. So Immortals are going to waste Stalkers, but uh, Zealots are not going to be nearly as affected by the Stalkers or the Immortal. So if we had these guys in a straight-up fight, these all these units are not going to be getting their bonus damages, even though you would assume that they would be better matchups. So we're going to go ahead and just attack move these guys into each other and see what happens. Go get them, boys! So we can see here, as expected, the Zealots and Immortal are really ripping through these Stalkers and the Immortal because they get their damage bonuses, or rather, more specifically, the Stalkers and the Immortal don't get their damage bonuses. We're going to retire the Hurt Fighters again and show you another example of focusing down the most important target on the battlefield. Now, amidst all these Zealots and uh, Immortals, there's going to be... Uh, excuse me, there's going to be... Uh, one target that all of these units are going to be getting damage bonuses against. So we're going to put out one, two, three, four, five stalkers and one immortal and show you that focusing down the immortal in the back, since it's the only unit that's getting damage bonuses off on these, and because it is the highest damage output unit in this red army, if we focus it down you can see what a different battle this will be. So let's go ahead and get that going. So we're going to attack move and go get him. But no, don't go get him. Focus down the most important target and get them. And what we're going to do here is uh, uh, we're going to combine this with pulling units back. But what you can do instead of just sitting there and eating all the damage, you can do something called kiting. Kiting basically means that you're going to run your units away and you're going to take pot shots at the units that can't catch up to you because they're slower. So you're just going to move. And I'm sorry, the planetary fortress got a few shots off, but you still see the point here. Uh, the point is that you can run these units around and finish off the rest of the army without taking any extra damage that you don't need to take and win the fight only because you're faster. So that was a combination of uh, whoops. That was a combination of focusing down that immortal in the back, which left us with all of our stalkers and our immortal. And then when I started running away and kiting those zealots, I killed them all, and I still have three stalkers on the field as opposed to when the red team won with two zealots and an immortal. So. A little bit of a combination of, of lessons there. I hope you guys got both different lessons. That is just focusing down the most important target, and when you're left to it, run your units away if you can, or just make them run away and fire uh, as they're running away and kind of just stutter step. So the, the micro here would be you just click on a place for them to go, and then when they're far enough away, like when the unit's far enough away, you're going to click the attack and just click on the ground or on the unit itself. It's easier to click on the ground and they'll shoot at the unit and then run them away again and then shoot and then run them away again and then shoot and then run away again and then shoot. So you keep doing that over and over until you can kill it. 
you need to know the speed matchups versus a lot of units and see what you can kite. Because if you can kite, you're going to basically be putting free damage on them while they can't damage you back. So a lot of cute little micro tricks there that you can use in order to preserve your units and win battles that you otherwise shouldn't if you weren't paying attention. So um, one last thing I'm going to show is engaging at ramps. Um, and this is going to be, uh, I'll, I will have these same three stalkers. I don't even care if they're retired or not. I'll pull a couple of the retired the ones too. The Since they're getting bored, they want to get back in the action. And uh, I'm going to pull a sentry or two. Now, these ramps are going to be your best defensive option for a few different reasons. Number one, if all, if there's a huge force here, like let's say there's like 30 units here, and they all want to fight, but they all need to get up the ramp. They're all going to be choked into this tiny little area, and you can fight them uh, by eliminating their vision from the ramp. Now, if there's a unit down on the bottom here, uh, you can see... Let me just pull this guy and move these guys out of here. You can see that if the stalker is on the low ground, he cannot see up here by it not being illuminated. So he has no idea what's up there. Units up there can fire at him, but he can't fire back. The same is true if you're on the top of a ramp. You can see that my vision is not showing the top of the ramp. Get out of here. It's not showing the top of the ramp. You can see all this is dimmed out, but you can still see up to about halfway up the ramp. So if you have something like sentries or another unit that's going to block vision from the other units on the bottom, then you're going to have all your units on top getting free shots off while the enemy cannot return fire. So let's go ahead and try this out. Let me move these units back just a little bit. And let me summon up a whole bunch of stalkers, but we're going to rally them over here instead. E okay. So, just comparing these two forces, we're going to see that this Protoss army has nine stalkers. This army only has six and a couple sentries, which aren't going to do a ton of damage to stalkers anyway. And besides, most of these stalkers are hurt anyway. So in a straight-up fight, these stalkers would absolutely roll these ones. But check this out. If you make it so they don't have vision, you're going to have these sentries come up here and go wham, bam. And these stalkers are not going to have any sort of vision up there while all of these guys up on the top are going to get free hits. And we're going to keep renewing our force fields to keep them down there on the bottom of the ramp. So look at that. You could do that endlessly. If you had enough force fields, and if they had no way to spot, you could do that endlessly and take out an infinite number of units. There is a challenge to dem demonstrate that point. But if you engage at ramps, and if you can limit their vision, or if you can cut them up as they come up the ramp, you're going to win a lot of fights that you usually shouldn't in a straight-up fight. So hopefully all that makes some sense. Uh, hopefully you guys are learning a lot from Unit Micro. There is a lot of different little micro tricks that you can do with every little race, and I will show you those micro tricks, but it's basically just a big combination of, uh, you know, force fields, whether it's using your casters, whether it's pulling units back when they're hurt, whether it's focus firing down important targets, or whether it's paying attention to making sure that your units are firing at the right targets, and thus getting their damage bonuses if they exist, rather than, uh, you know, just letting them shoot at whatever. So there's a lot of different ways you can improve your micro. You can practice in this map if you want to, or just practice it in your own games. If you have the attention that is required to keep micro up, as well as macro, you're going to be a fantastic StarCraft II player. So get used to all of these mechanics, and report back with your findings if you choose to do so by leaving a comment in this video. So uh, if there is nothing else to address, which I don't believe there is, I'll be signing out for the time being until the next time when we have fun either playing or casting or showing you guys cool new tricks to get better at the game. We'll see you then.